Welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. Today we're going to do raw edge applique on the long arm. I'm Kim Sandberg and with me is... I'm Christina Whitney. And we're going to talk about raw edge applique. So this is one of those techniques that can be really fun to do on the long arm. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of what it is. I know this is something you really love to do because you're all about mm -hmm. do it on the long arm as much as possible, right? Exactly. So this is one of those techniques that either you love it or you hate it. Okay. I've got a really good friend and she does the most meticulous oh, applique yeah. work. Uh -huh. And she sees my raw edge application, she's like, uh-uh, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> she does all needle turn and everything. Yeah, she though. does oh, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. But raw edge applique, and it can be done different ways. Mm -hmm. So you can do a reverse applique, okay. which this sample here is a reverse applique. Okay. And that just means that I've layered two layers of fabric, and then I cut away the top layer to allow that back, or the bottom layer to show through. So you stitch the design and then you go through and you just trim it with scissors all through here. Uh -huh. That is really cool. And that's really fun. Um, so any tips on doing that so that it turns out well? Use an open design okay. that, you know, it will stitch the whole thing. Like it, mm -hmm. it won't have open edges. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you want a, like a closed shape. A that's closed what shape. I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah, so that you can stitch that out or cut it out and have the stitching encompass the whole thing. Okay. So that's, that's really good. fun. Um, another that's tip really with fun. that is to use a darker fabric on the top <laughs> than the backy so that you don't see the second layer through the top layer. Which you didn't you, quite follow your advice there. This is a, a, a sample. sample to show people what not to do. Right. I love it. And test your tension. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned it, not me. <laughs> Actually, I think I think the thread that you've got going here is very fun. It's kind of another element to it. So, yeah. okay, and that cool. is the thing with the reverse applique. You are going to see the thread, right? Because it's, it's right. staying there, and yeah. it's anyway it becomes part of the design. Yeah, I like it. Okay, okay, so this is this is really fun to do. Fall weaves, awesome. Yep. Okay, so what is another way to do raw edge applique? So another way to do raw edge applique is to just take the top layer and cut it out to the shapes that you want yep. and put it down and stitch it. So, so this one, I can see you've done a lot of detail work on this one. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but that one was raw edge applique with several different fabrics, mm -hmm. layering it. So it's kind of like a collage quilt. Yeah. And collage quilts are usually done with raw edge applique. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I can see that you stitch the edges down of mm -hmm. this right here. Yep. And we're going to talk a little bit more about over that. how to stitch them down. Okay. That's really so. cool. Okay. So another way to do raw edge applique. Now, this is the part that I love. You you came into work and you're <laughs> like, look what I did over the weekend. This is another so another cool. fun sample. So this is a lot of different fabrics. So tell us what you did with this cool sample here. Well, with raw edge applique, a lot of times you're going to want to wash the quilt. Mm -hmm. So you want to pick a fabric that's going to hold up right. how you want it to hold up. Yeah. So I was testing some different fabrics, and we'll start over here. Okay. So this one right here is a fleece. Okay. And you'll notice after washing it, it did not fray at all. No, it didn't. It held its shape very well. It did. So if you're looking for kind of like that rag fill mm -hmm. or like the frayed fill, mm -hmm. this is not going to be your best option. No. But if you want it to hold its shape, this yeah. is great. So we're, we're okay. going to show you some samples later with using some fleece. Okay. I also showed some different ways to stitch it down. So I did one stitching right along the edge mm -hmm. and then one just doing kind of a wavy line okay. around the edge. And that kind of allows some of this to fluff up a little bit, but not so much with the fleece. Right. Okay, I like that. Cool. Okay. So what's the next one we did Let's here? Let's move over to this one. This is denim. Okay. And this one was cut as a circle. Uh-huh. And I just stitched around the edge. And I did some of that wavy stuff over here also. Okay. So you can tell it allowed it, the denim to kind of pop up a little bit there. And fray a little. And, okay. and fray a little bit. Whereas over here, I did it pretty close. So it's holding it down, but it's still got a little bit of fray going. Okay. So, so you washed all of this, right? Yeah. So I okay. made the sample and then I washed the sample. Okay. And I had lots of thread all over my clothes and my laundry. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Didn't think that one through. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And this one, I also did some stitching over the edge 
just to, to test out different things. I like that. Yeah, we'll talk about the stitch again. Okay. Okay, this next one over here mm -hmm. is a minky. That's nice. And I have to say, I was really shocked by this one. I expected this one to just be a big, huge mess. Because you know how minky like sheds yeah, everywhere? it does. Look how well that held oh up. Oh my gosh. It's like I washed off all the extra fluff and it is good to go. There's nothing that's gonna move. And you know, I feel like that would hold up over repeated washes too mm -hmm. and not fray anymore. Yeah, so very similar to the fleece. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one is again denim, but this one I cut in s with straight edges. Yeah. And so you can tell there's a little different there with the fraying. There is. So this frayed a little bit on this side. The other side's not quite so much. Depends on, it looks like how the fabric's woven, uh -huh. huh? Yep, the green. Cool. Yep. So okay. let's scoot back up to this yellow one here. Okay. This is just like your cotton regular, regular quilting. quilting. Yep, and I used some chenille it oh, to cover fun. up the top here, and we're going to go over that. Okay. Um, but again, different stitches, stitches on the different sides to show the different look of it. Very cool. Okay. Next one is our flannel. Yes. Flannel is one that usually it fluffs up really nicely. Yeah, it does. You can see that one's starting to fluff pretty good there. This one needs a little bit of extra help to fluff, possibly. It's like you need to pull some of those strings out, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But with several washes, it would be a really nice texture. S soften up. Yeah, I like that. Okay, this next one, it's kind of like a gauze. Did uh -huh. we decide what, what it was actually named? Um, embrace? I think it's called Embrace. Yeah, okay. it's, but it's a double gauze is what it is. Okay. Yeah, and it's fraying pretty good. It is. I'd never thought of using that as, as an applique. I've, I've used that before, like backings on baby quilts or mm -hmm. like summer weight quilts. That is kind of fun. Yeah, I just want to try different things. Yeah. If you don't like that frayed look though, look at the top up here. I did oh, the yeah. stitching over the edge. Oh, look at that. And so it's not fraying. It's fun though how that, the, just the fabric itself has a fun texture in it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yep. very cool. Okay, this next one, I haven't ironed anything, so it's kind of <laughs> fluffing really nicely there, but showing how you can use um, multiple layers. Okay, I like that. And depending on where you stitch, again, is going to change the, the look. Like this one could fluff up a whole bunch and start to fray a lot. So Depending on how many times you wash it. Okay, yeah. so I love, I love how you did this. It's just so fun to see all these different fabrics and kind of what they did there, um, how they acted mm -hmm. being washed. And Very cool. is there one that's right or wrong? No. no, it's whatever look you're going for. For that project. Yep. Yep, I like it. Okay, so let's okay. take a look at, um, what else do we have here? Oh, different ways to do the edges. So we've got, <laughs> we've got the awesome pinking shears here. So this is a very ancient pair of pinking shears. That's one way how you can cut the edges. It's got this nice uh, zigzag essentially that it puts on the edge of the fabric. That usually will may mean that that edge isn't gonna fray as much. Mm -hmm. It kind of puts it in check. Yeah. So that's one way you can do it. Cut yeah, most of the, the pre-cuts that you buy, mm -hmm. the edges are already pinked, but yep. you can do that yourself if you want to do yep. that. Um, you can cut it out with regular scissors. Mm -hmm. You can... Um, use your rotary cutter too. Use a rotary cutter. You can also use like an, an AccuQuilt uh, or AccuCutter so or some kind of a yeah. cutting system to cut out the different shapes. Exactly. And those are so fun because they're so quick and easy to cut out and easy way to add some fun pop to your quilt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing that you can do is just layer a piece of fabric down, mm. stitch out your design, and then trim it off on the outside. I like that. That would be really fun to do with um, like stencils or with your post-stitcher where you can mm -hmm. just lay down those designs and then cut everything away. Do that. Yep. Double, the double layer applique. <laughs> yep. So and we'll have some samples of that. Okay. Okay, so those are different ways that you can cut it out. You can cut out different shapes, different sizes, mm -hmm. whatever floats your boat. I like it. Okay. But then we have to worry about how do we apply it to the quilt. Yeah, because this is, this is the thing. I think a lot of people think the applique has to be done either by hand, like we talked mm -hmm. about earlier, or like at their machine, but um, domestic machine. Yeah. <laughs> how do you do it on the long arm? <laughs> Christina's well, like, let's go into fun mode. There are lots of options out there. Yeah. There's like Wonder Under, Steam a Seam, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. You can use a, a basting spray. Perfect. My personal favorite, the glue stick. Washable glue stick. 
Love those. So it holds it in place while you're stitching it down mm -hmm. and then it, it can wash out. A lot of times, depending on what I'm doing though, I will just take my design and slap it down on the fabric mm -hmm. and just use my hand to hold it in place as I'm stitching around. Stitching around it, okay. Yeah. So you don't even necessarily do anything to it before. You'll just load your fabric, your backing, your batting, and your quilt top, and then you just lay that out. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if you wanted to have everything on there before you started quilting, a fusible would be a good way to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So while we're talking about that, let's talk about this quilt yeah, behind us real yeah. quick. Such a okay. cute quilt. So this quilt, um, you'll notice it's got a lot of just raw edge pieces hanging out here, mm -hmm. but it's got three different layers. I love that. So rather than adhering each individual layer, I would just stick a piece down, stitch around the first piece, mm -hmm. put the next piece on, stitch around it, put the third piece on and stitch around it. It. And then that way it allowed part of it to stay flat mm -hmm. rather than the whole thing just coming out. Just being stitched in that small mm -hmm. center. Yeah. And what a fun and easy quilt. I mean, the piecing on this was super minimal. You did this all on the long arm? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I stitched a border. I stitched an edge to edge or a, I'm going to say border to border just in the white section. Uh-huh. And then I went back and put the appliques on. Very cute, very cute. And fast. I mean, that's, fast. that's really fast because the only piecing you had to do was putting the borders around that white center. Correct. I love it. Yep. So super fun. Oh, so easy quilt. Like for that one, I didn't use anything to adhere the applique. I would just laid it down because you've got gravity on your side oh, yeah. when you're working on the long arm. So that was really nice. Did you mark everything before you did that though so that you would get everything nice and straight? Or did you just kind of eyeball it? <laughs> well, if you look really closely, <laughs> they're not perfectly straight. So it looks good though. I feel like it, I think feel like everything lined up. So, okay. And to be honest, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I made that one a long time ago. I don't remember if I marked it. Yeah. Um, I did a quilt a good similar possibility. to that and I'm trying to remember. I feel like there was some kind of a line or something in my background fabric that I was like, that's where I'm gonna place the next one. So that's yeah. great. Cute yep. quilt though. Thanks. Okay. okay, so stitching the applique down. On the long arm. On the long arm. Okay. Let's go through some samples. We're going to yeah. do some show and tell. Okay. Some I more show this. and tell. We've got some really fun samples here. So I love this. You've been working on like a collection of different quilts that feature Christmas trees. Yes. Very fun. Okay. So how did you do okay. this one? So that one is again, raw edge. Mm -hmm. um, I laid all of the pieces out and then just used a glue stick okay. to glue them on. Mm -hmm. And then actually, I think I used Tima Seam on that one. Is it? Or yeah, one, you did. You, have, you, yep. have, some, you yep. have some kind of an adhesive. Yeah, I did it, put that one on. And um, pressed it. Yeah, because it was outside of my throat space and I didn't want them to oh, fall off. Yeah. So that one I did use the Steam -a Seam or the some kind of an adhesive. Mm -hmm. And then I just to stitch it, mm -hmm. I did an all over design. I just free motioned so all over cute. the whole entire thing. There, I. I tried my best mm -hmm. <laughs> to make sure that the little pieces, like the, the little tails of the designs, yeah. that I'd catch that as yeah. I was stitching. There was I one yeah. that I missed and it started to come off. So I just went back with the, the same thread and just stitched it down manually. And so. this is all free motion in the background. Yeah, the whole thing is pretty motion. I, so, I thought it was a pro stitcher design. <laughs> well, I can make it a pro stitcher design. But yeah, if you flip over to the back, you can okay. see that the whole thing is just oh. stitched through. Oh, very. Oh, yeah. Now you can see that you kind of the designs around where you did. That is so fun. So that's fun. And this, you know, there's lots of kits out there that are like laser cut like mm -hmm. this that you could even do something as simple as this. Yeah. Iron it all on, load it, and then just do an edge to edge a tighter, tighter one so mm -hmm. that it makes sure and catches all those edges. That's yeah. really fun. Yep. Okay. All right, what's next? Well, if you were a little bit more concerned and you wanted to make sure that those pieces stayed down really good, mm -hmm. this one, oh, oh this I still have some cute. markings on there. That one, what I did was I did an all over for the whole entire piece of fabric. Okay. And then I went back and placed my green pieces for the tree and oh. the star and the stump. Um, okay. And I just laid one down and then stitched over the entire block yeah. 
rather than stitching around the edges, uh -huh. it gave it a little bit of a different look to it. It does. And it, I think it held it in place pretty well. I agree. And so it looks like you started at the bottom and just worked your way up. Correct. The, the way that they're overlapped. Uh -huh. That is really fun. And how fun because you did, you can just, you did a few different designs in these. I see lots of ribbon candy, very appropriate for Christmas time <laughs> stuff. I like that. Yeah, we okay. gotta get our candy in there somehow. I know. Yep. Nice little candy cane border there. Or, you like uh, binding. it? Yes, yep. it's very, very cute. For the whole series, I tried to get little bindings. I love, oh fun. Okay, so this one is a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm noticing that the background even is raw edge applique. Yes. So I got a little wild and crazy on this one. This one I used a different process. Okay. I put down my backing, my batting, and a top layer. And then I stitched out a digitized Christmas tree design oh. that I had created. Okay. Just a basic outline okay. so that I could lay my fabrics down, mm -hmm. my collage pieces, and I would be able to, don't show the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to cut that part out, Jacob. Sorry, I, was, I forgot I wasn't supposed to flip this one over. Our tension's horrible on that one. So you, okay. So you can flip it that way. No, the, the star's bad too. <laughs> How about that? No. Okay. No, okay. I'm, I'm fine with you showing the tree. Okay. I wasn't worried about the tension because that was just an outline for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's my excuse. <clears throat> so okay. you so you stitch the outline of everything and then you started laying down the pieces but this is fun because yeah. it's kind of like you didn't stitch all the way yeah so instead of making sure that the pieces were really super stable mm -hmm. I just went all over kind of crazy just to hold them down but leaving some of the tails free so yeah. that it gives it some three-dimensional look and just let it have fun. And this has some really fun thread in it you played with some nice shiny I'm trying to see, is that, is it metallic thread? I think it is. That was a glitter thread. A glitter? Yes. Well, it's got a nice reflection on the lights. I don't know how much the camera is catching yeah. that, but it looks really cool. And I think the star has the metallic oh, in it. The yeah, metallic star, I put there. a gold metallic in there. Very fun. It's fun having that little bit of extra sparkle. Yeah. So playing a little bit with thread. Mm -hmm. I love it. So the, the kind of the process or the steps I did is I, since I had a tree outline already mm -hmm. stitched down, I took my backgrounds and I laid all the backgrounds down first around oh. the star and around the tree. Okay. Went in and stitched that. Okay. Just keeping a, a nice kind of tight stipple mm -hmm. just to hold all the edges down. Yeah. And then I went back and I put the tree down. Cute. And I stitched the tree with some like wood grain. Then I went back okay. and I put the, the actual tree, the body of the tree yeah. down, stitched all of that. And then I went in and put the star in. And this would be a fun way to use a bunch of scraps that you just mm -hmm. have left over. Yeah. Really fun. That's yeah. really fun. So I enjoyed that one. That's very cute. Okay. So what do we do when we have really large appliques? Yeah. Because so far we've looked at stuff that's quite small. So I absolutely love this quilt that you made for your son-in-law. This is way fun. Merry Christmas. <laughs> This is why this one is airing originally <laughs> after Christmas. Yes. We got to keep it secret. That's right. Okay, so this one I did um, a combination of applique and reverse applique. Cool. So I just got really wild and crazy. I love it. So I loaded my backing, uh -huh. my batting, uh -huh. the black fleece, uh -huh. and then a layer of red fleece. Okay. And then you stitched out the parts of the vehicle here. Yes. Okay. But stitching through all those layers of fleece was fun. So. <laughs> the machine had no issues with it. It right. stitched beautifully. It's a little fluffy, but, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, very fluffy. So I stitched around the whole edge of the vehicle. Yeah. And then in these sections here, I went and did the reverse applique where I cut out ah, some of the red cool. to let that black mm -hmm. pop through. Okay. The rest of it, I cut out the red so ah. that um, that was like the applique shape. Right. So I like the combining of the two. So you mm -hmm. see the background fabric and then you stitched all of this awesome uh, design around the rest of it. I like the, the pebbles in the road, the stone on the road and yeah, I had a lot of stuff here. Um, but the point of this is if you do have a really large applique, mm -hmm. you want to stitch it so it's stable. Right. So I went back in and I digitized his tire treads and it. stitched that out. And I just, I made sure that there weren't places that were so open 
that it wasn't going to be stable over right. time. So right. just added little details to keep it in place. Keep it in place. Yeah. And and that's always important to look at your uh, the specifications for the manufacturer on the batting because mm -hmm. they'll tell you a minimum amount of space, yeah. like eight to 10 inches, four mm -hmm. to six inches, whatever. Yep. Yep. That's really cool. So really, really cool. Lots of fun. And You're it's so creative collecting. when it comes to these things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a fun quilt. Such a fun quilt. Okay. So let's talk about this one real quick. Okay. I'm sure our viewers want to get stitching here pretty soon. This one's fun. So this is another way to treat that edge. So this whole um, blue border here is the only applique on this quilt. The rest mm -hmm. of it's just thread play. But so tell me about this stitching that was done along the edge here. It's just a random fun little scribble stitch just going on and off of that raw edge. Yeah. And that really helps to hold it down and to prevent a lot of fraying. And I think this this one is so fun to do because there's just no there's no need for perfection. It's just mm -hmm. laying down a bunch of thread to hold everything in exactly. place. Exactly. It's a that's yep. a fun one. Okay. Okay. So let's do a little bit of stitching and then we're okay. gonna talk about um, what we do if we don't like the raw, the raw edge, edge look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So feet. Feet. Let's talk about the best foot to use for this. Yeah. It depends. It de <laughs> Christina's favorite <laughs> saying. It's so true though, because it's going to depend on the type of fabric you're doing, whether you're doing straight lines or anything like that. Mm -hmm. What do you have on the Moxie right now though? Right now I have a glide foot on. Okay. And it's probably one of my go-to feet for mm -hmm. doing raw edge applique. Another favorite foot, if I've got everything adhered really nicely, I love the micro foot because you can really see what you're doing. You get really close to those edges. Yeah, especially so. when you want to do some detail work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to do this little mitten. So you're just going to do some stitching here for us. Show us how you're going to stitch it down. I made sure I had a right and a left. <laughs> Always. It is important <laughs> to have right and left for mitts or mittens of any kind. Okay, I'm going to bring up that bobbin thread. Grab my top thread. It's running away. So out of those different techniques that we talked about with the stitching, yeah, what would you like me to do on this right mitt? Why don't you just show us um, <clears throat> stitching really close to the edge? Because that kind of seems to be... On quite a few things you've done that, where you're stitching within, I would say, about that quarter inch of the edge, maybe a quarter inch or closer to the edge. Okay. So I've got my settings at um, 11 stitches per inch. Okay. It's on a cruise at 100. It's a low cruise. And let's go ahead and start stitching. Okay. And you haven't done anything to hold this one down. It's just laid down in place, right? It's just laid down in place. It's a smaller piece, so you really don't have to worry about it moving so much. Yep, I missed a spot, so I just went back. Another thing that I like to do sometimes when I'm doing this um, is to use my sure foot uh -huh. and the piece out or the baby grand oh, yeah. ruler to just kind of help me guide. Yeah, absolutely. Some, sometimes the machine likes to get going one direction and I lose a little bit of control. And when you do that, you would, of course, be using the sure foot with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on this one, why don't you show everybody how to do that scribble stitch? Because that Ooh, yeah. I think that that's one that people might be a little bit like, really? Just scribble? But yeah. How, would okay. you, how do you do that right there on that edge? It really is just like scribbling. Yeah, but you can throw some little loops in there. The goal is to just... Cover up that whole side. Cover up that edge. And you can definitely choose how far into the design you want to go. Yep, and you can go out into the backing also. I'm trying to get some of this white thread to show, but this is a fleece black. It's very so fluffy. It's <laughs> not wanting to show the thread. But yeah, you can go anywhere you want. You're in charge. I love it. So that is, a, that is a really fun one to just see how you're doing that. I have a feeling that would be a good stitch to do if you have a little bit of a <laughs> frustration you want to work out on things. Yes. I, kind of I do things around. Yeah. I do like um, when I'm doing stitches like that, more of a circular motion mm -hmm. rather than trying to do a zigzag stitch or a gotcha. back and forth because you're not 
getting those points and it, it's just, it, I don't know, the, the loops tend to be a little bit smoother okay, and flow a little bit better and you get it done quicker. That's a good tip for that. So let me move that Very out of your tip. way. Okay. So um, I know another way that I've seen, and, and this is something that people love to do on their domestic machines, is like the buttonhole stitch around the edge. Oh. And you can actually do that with the long arm. So do you want to show us how to do a little bit of that maybe on the little red mitten there? Uh oh, we're going to end up with two um, lefts. Oh no, I had an, oh, there's oh, my right. You got another it was right. Hiding. Okay. <laughs> Can't have a right without a left, or a left without a right. Okay, so I don't do a whole lot of like the blanket stitch because mm -hmm. I don't have patience for that. But what we can do is stitch up one, over, back, up, over, back, up, over, back. So you're moving the machine so that you're getting that stitch to look. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a lot of this to do, you can do that on the long arm too. So if you like the look of that, but you don't want to sit down and maneuver under your domestic machine. You can do that, so that's good. Ooh, okay, we got so, a little wild and crazy on that one. So what's another stitch that you can think of? I think we've done enough of that one. It looks good though. So I think um, some of them I left a lot more distance from the edge oh, right. to the stitching. Okay. I don't know that I necessarily would with this guy but if I had something that I was wanting to fray or like mm -hmm. the flowers on the quilt that behind mm -hmm. us, something like that, I would just try to stitch further in. And a lot of times using an echo foot is a yeah. good idea when you're doing this because that helps you to gauge how far away from the edge you need to be. You can easily pick that distance and mm -hmm. keep it consistent. I like yep. that. Yep. Okay. So that's okay. a fun one too. So what, what are some ideas um, when you don't necessarily want to have that raw edge? Perfect. Let's bring up a couple more samples okay. here. Okay. So this one is really fun. I think this is one we show people all the time in the studio, yeah. right? I didn't actually make this one. And yes, there is a pin in it holding on yes. this <laughs> the little ornament. A little backing um, bell off of that one. So this is raw edge applique, but using some chenillet. Yep to cover up the raw edge. And that is so cute because it just frays and it just gives it a fun texture. It's so fun to do yeah. and easy to do. And it comes so. in a variety of colors, different widths. Mm -hmm. um, you can find it on, uh, what's the website? The uh, Chenille. Chenille. Com. Yeah. And this one actually, I'm looking at it pretty closely. That's actually two layers of Chanel. It is two layers on most of them. So don't be afraid to stack it on there for a little more effect. Oh yeah. So what's another okay. something we can do around those fun edges? Couching. Oh, couching. Christina's other favorite. <laughs> Her other one, true love. <laughs> couching. Whatever I'm stitching that day, that's my favorite. <laughs> Unless that it's truth? not, and then it's my enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving no. on to the next one, yeah. yeah. So. So this was just a, a raw edge applique piece that had been cut out with like a, some cutter mm -hmm. and I adhered it on and stitched it down. And then I went back and did the couching over the raw edge mm -hmm. to kind of cover it up. Um, so there cute. was a spot that came loose or I missed. So I went back and I could do some more over it. Um, it it's one of those things that you can put multiple layers like yeah. the chenille, you can do whatever you want. You can use different types of threads or yarns. It's really cute. Um, you can even use similar colors or contrasting mm -hmm. colors like this one. So you got lots of options out there. Absolutely. So if you don't like the look of that raw edge, but yet you still want to save some time and do the raw edge, it's easy to cover up. Very, very easy yeah. to cover up. Mm -hmm. You also, this is a technique that you use on your uh, scrappy, your crazy scrappy quilts. Yes. Yep. Which that's another whole. <laughs> You really are, like, this is your thing. This is your jam. You love to just love do it all on edge. the long arm. Yep. So. Anything I can do on the long arm, that's what I'm going to do. just makes it that much easier. Yep. So, Well, that's awesome. We have anything else to show us? Or I is that... think that is it. Okay. Well, we'd love to see what you've done with any fun raw edge applique um, projects that you've done lately. We always love to see pictures. Be sure to use hashtag handy quilter so we can check those out. Well, thanks for joining and joining us this week. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe for more great quilting content and have fun quilting. Mm -hmm.